Hey, today we're going to do a Portuguese cooking technique called Escabeche. You'll see this throughout Portugal. It's extremely popular. It's been around for hundreds of years and for millennia, vinegar has been used to preserve food. It takes its technique from that preservation style. This technique of escabeche comes from all those years without refrigerators, that style of using vinegar to preserve food. Bacteria, when you get a pH below four, especially below 3.7, just about all bacteria can't live in that environment. White wine vinegar has a pH of around two to three. Today we're gonna make escabeche bacalao. It could be used in a lot of different styles. It's basically kind of like adding a vinaigrette to different types of food. And it's also, throughout Portugal, you'll see it being used not so much as a preservation technique anymore because obviously modern refrigeration, but just those old flavors have been ingrained in the culture. Throughout Portugal, it could also be served either warm or cold. And it also could be kind of done a la minute. In other words, you know, grill your sardines and put the olive oil and vinegar and just let them, let that marry for, you know, 10 minutes and serve. Or a lot of times it's made in advance, marinated for, you know, overnight or many days and then serve. This is another technique that was taken to other parts of the world by the Portuguese. In Japan, there's a technique called nanbansuke. From this clip, this is a Japanese YouTube site, and you can see they're using vinegar, spices, just different types. And the name nanbansuke actually refers to the Portuguese as Southern Barbarian Marinade. Portuguese ships sailed to Japan in the 1500s, and they brought this technique with them, and now the Japanese have many dishes where they use this non-bonsuke technique, often with fish. For bakilau, this is a salted cod. I have already soaked it for 24 hours in water and changed the water about four times. That's something you do to extract the salt from the bakilau. Now we're gonna cook the bakilau. It should take somewhere about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. I have, like this is the main boin of the fish, much thicker. Then I have two tail pieces that are pretty thin. So I am going to put the thicker piece in first, probably for about five minutes, and then I will add the other two pieces. When you could pull it apart, like right now, there's no way if I use you know two forks or a fork and a knife, this is really tough, but after it's cooked, you'll see that it'll pull apart really easily. Okay, the big loin has been in there for about six minutes. Now I'm gonna put in these thinner pieces. Okay, it's been about 13 minutes since I started simmering the bakilao. And pull out a loin so you can see. You already can see it's breaking apart. You can't even like get it out of here. So that's kind of what you're looking for. You want to do this while it's in the pot, but I already did it to be sure it was going to be done. But as long as you can flake off big chunks like that, I find you kind of want slightly bigger chunks, maybe like half inch chunks. And again, it's not bad always to taste. A little salty like we expect with bakilao, so you want to really be careful adding any more salt to it. Sometimes, especially like I'm going to make this, I'm going to let it marinate probably overnight and I won't add any salt till the next day because some of that salt will diffuse into the oil and the vinegar. So the next day I'll taste it again and see if I think it needs any additional salt. This technique varies from here on out. I, I've seen, I know my dad even sometimes they wouldn't cook the vegetables or onions at all. They would just kind of mix it in with the bakilao with olive oil and vinegar or garlic and just let it sit overnight. So you could do that. I like um, just heating up my olive oil just to Sometimes the uh, flavors are fat soluble, so they come out better in oil. So I like to heat up my oil just to give it a really light cooking, just to kind of pull out some flavors. Not, I'm not trying to color up the onions or anything like that. So you want to put a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'll put in, I have some bay leaf here. My oil's not quite hot, but again, in this application, you don't need scorching hot olive oil. You're mainly kind of steeping these aromatics in the olive oil to pull out flavors. So I could see my, that smells so good. Wow, these simple pleasures. Um, add something else. Just right away, you can smell the bay leaf coming out. You can smell the extra virgin olive oil. Now I'll put in my onions, a half of an onion sliced up pretty thin. My red bell peppers. You could uh, use red bell peppers like this. You could use roasted red bell peppers. You could use, uh, a lot of people put garbanzo beans in this or fresh tomatoes. If I was putting fresh tomatoes, I wouldn't cook them at all. I would just slice them and add them after this step. And you want your proportion of oil to vinegar should be about 50-50 or up to three parts oil and one part vinegar. So 
you definitely could play with that. You know, I'd start off with 50-50 extra virgin olive oil and, and vinegar, and then adjust it if you think it needs to be adjusted. I'll add in the garlic. I put about four cloves of garlic. So I'll turn off my fire now. So this has probably been going less than five minutes and pretty low heat. Next, I'm gonna add in some olives. You could use black olives, green olives, whatever your preference is. So I'll add in quite a few olives. Now I'm gonna add in some pd pd or peri peri. Not quite sure, I think different places around the world pronounce it differently. This is a pepper, I believe the Portuguese brought it back from Mozambique, Africa. So again, that's your preference, whatever you wanna add. I'll put some black pepper. Probably about a teaspoon of black pepper. Probably added about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna do the same with the white wine vinegar. Mm, wow, it smells so good. And now I'll add in the baccalao. And this is just another example of when I say Portugal was one of the first fusion cuisines of the world. They brought food to many parts of the world and they also brought back food spices from many parts of the world. For example, chicken vindaloo in Goa, India is part of Karn Vindu Iluj in Madeira Island. A lot of the spices they use in Bull the Mel in Madeira Island and on the Azores for Queijada's Dona Amelia are spices they brought back from around the world. They brought tempura to Japan and in Macau, China, Pastege de nata are extremely popular. So is sawdust pudding is another Portuguese dish brought to that part of the world. So definitely take pride in the fact that Portuguese cuisine was one of the first fusion cuisines known to man. And now I'm gonna add in about three tablespoons of chopped cilantro. You could also use flat leaf green parsley. It's very good in here. Okay, for service, I'm gonna put it in a casserole dish. That smells so wonderful. Try one of my recipes for uh, bread, either bulgakaku or papapsikush. Just a little crusty bread dipped in that vinegar. Oh, it's so good. So this is delicious just the way it is, but it only gets better. The flavor's merry. I would recommend doing it at least four hours in advance and let it sit in that vinegar, extra virgin olive oil. But you can serve it like this, and you also could serve it cold. A lot of times it's served cold right out of the refrigerator. So whatever you prefer, go for it. Now you know how to cook using the Portuguese Escobé style. Now go cook for somebody else. I really recommend going to my website, justcookwithmichael.com, because I always put the, the recipes in the notes section on YouTube, but the recipes on the website are much better organized visually, and it's easier to print from the website and search for things under the website. You can search by seafood, pork, beef, dessert, food from the Azores, food from Madeira. So highly recommend checking out that site if you have it.